Hi, I'm the Grow Boss, and this is the video you want to watch if you bought my Mega Meter because I'm going to quickly show you how to fire it up and use this thing. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a task to do that will totally help you learn how to use the Mega Meter and mix your nutrients. Ready? First thing to know the batteries and calibration screws are under the cap. Next, there's the meter body and the probe, which is detachable and replaceable. And finally, on the meter body are three buttons. The top one is for temperature, the middle one is for PPM and pH, and the bottom one turns it on. And what was that other thing? Oh yeah, they're waterproof-ish. Check that out. Which is awesome in case you drop it in the water, but know this, we don't warranty water drops. So, let's start with PPM. And in these two shot glasses, we have Vegas tap water and Costco bottled water. And to test them, we turn the meter on by pushing button three. We wait for it to boot and for the numbers to settle down. And then, because we're testing PPM, we don't have to push anything else because that's the default. And that tests for how much salt is in the water. And to do that, we just dip and hold the probe in the water about an inch deep or halfway up where I drew that line. Now, make sure not to let the probe crash into anything. And then in a few seconds, a number pops up. Now, this meter goes up to 10,000. And that's important because when your plants get bigger, you're going to want that greater than 1,000 ppm number. But for now, you should know that you need to add a zero or multiply by 10. So when the screen says 1, it means 10. And when it says 3, it means 30. And 46 means 460 ppm. And to remind you, you can see there's a little 10 times on the screen so you don't forget. And again, I know this seems scary, but remember, it's not rocket science. We're just mixing some nutrients. And I promise, you'll get used to it. Next, we read the screen, and I made it jitterbug big, so you guys can see it without your glasses. Okay, Vegas water is like 450, yikes. And then we do the same thing with the RO filtered water from Costco, and we're down at like 30 ppm. Awesome. Now, what those numbers mean is a topic for a whole nother video, but for now, all you really need to know is how to actually use the meter. So trust me when I tell you, this is not rocket science. We're just mixing nutrients. And even though all the meter guys always wanna teach you the difference between TDS, NEC, and PPM, for our purposes, for the purposes of growing wheat, cannabis, marijuana, it's just not as critical as everybody wants you to believe. Why? Say it with me. Because this is not rocket science. We're just mixing nutrients. And all you really have to know is that yield is based on light, not nutrients. And I'll go over how much nutrients to feed your plants in another video. But for now, for your first three grows, I just want you to understand that statistically, too many nutrients is the number one reason growers kill their plants. So be careful when you use them. Now, let's go over testing the pH of the water. And we're gonna do this the exact same way. We push button number three, the on button, and then we wait for the software to boot and for the numbers to settle down, and then we push button two. We switch from PPM to pH, and then we submerge it. Again, be careful not to jam or crash the tip up against anything because they break and the warranty doesn't cover probes. Okay, my tap water has a pH of 7.6, and the Costco RO filtered water is almost 8. But what does that really mean? Because everybody seems to think your pH has to be perfect. And again, trust me on this, pH is worth exactly dick. This isn't rocket science. All you need to know is that the pH is anywhere from 5 to 7. Hydro, soil, cocoa, DWC, it doesn't matter. Anywhere from five to seven works for your first three grows. And even though the meter does temperature two, 
for our purposes, as long as your water is about room temperature, you don't need to microfocus on that either. And when it comes time to store your meter, when you're done with it, add a little filtered water to a glass, drop a sponge in it so the probe sits on the sponge and you're good. And I know a lot of you worry about the probe and replacing the probe and keeping the probe in storage solution or whatever. But the reality is, these things die. They require the occasional replacement and there is nothing you can do to change that. So, the important thing to remember is this, don't jam or crash your probe into anything. And if your water is about what it was last time, then hey, the meter is probably still calibrated. Why? Because this ain't rocket science. We're just growing wheat. Don't worry so much. Okay, I'm the Grow Boss. Thanks for buying my Mega Meter. And don't forget, when you get tired of dragging water home from the store, and you're tired of it spilling in your car, and then when your plants are bigger, just like I promised, and they're drinking more water than ever, you're going to get to the point where you will hate bringing water home. And it's usually after the third spill. So I just want you to know when you get there, I make an RO. It's the ultimate RO. It's got one-to-one -one waste. It's pre-assembled. It can hook directly to a hose out of the box and it delivers water all the way down to 30 ppm, depending on the source, for as little as 179. Why? Right because growing wheat is not rocket science. Oh, that's right, the task I was going to assign you to help you learn how to use the Mega Meter. Weird that I'd make you sit through that Ultimate RO commercial before showing you that, right? Anyway, here's what I want you to do. Take three nutrients and three gallons of water plus one gallon of tap water. And for this, I'm using Humboldt Nutrient three part, grow micro and bloom. You can of course use any nutrient you like, but I like Humboldt. We sell lots of it at my store. They're inexpensive and they want a cannabis cup. So it works for me and my customers. And I'm doing it like this in glass jars so you can see everything because a lot of my customers find mixing nutrients intimidating. So I thought we could reduce some of that if we poured them out and looked at them like this. You, of course, will mix them straight out of the bottle though. Anyway, a tablespoon usually works best for this. So you'll take a bottle, make sure the cap is on tight, invert it, and shake it up. You'll pull a tablespoon from the bottle. And remember, a tablespoon is three teaspoons. And we'll mix it in and we'll measure the water We'll test the water for the PPM. And let's say that this equals 150 PPM per tablespoon. And we know that the water started at 30 PPM. Well, we would be at 120 PPM per tablespoon per gallon. And we could calculate that back. It would be 40 PPM per teaspoon, or it would be 240 PPM per tablespoon. And then we would do the same with these two nutrients. Then. We test the water again, and now we have a baseline. We know what the water started at, and we know what a tablespoon from each of these bottles is worth. Okay, make sure to keep track of both the starting and finishing PPMs and pH, and then we'll add a tablespoon of bloom to these three gallons, and test them again, the pH and PPM, and then we'll add a tablespoon of grow to these three gallons. And now we know something. We know that these two gallons should have about the same PPM in them because we have one tablespoon each from Grow and Bloom. So they should add up to about the same. But that's not true with number three because this one actually has three tablespoons in it now. The one we started off with Micro plus the Grow and Bloom. And then the same thing here with the tap water. It won't be the same as these two because this has one tablespoon of grow and bloom plus all the other PPM it started with. And remember, each time we do this, write down your PPM and pH and you'll see the numbers will start to come out similar. 
Okay, finally, we add one tablespoon of micro to these three gallons. And now, these three gallons should be the same PPM with one tablespoon from each of the nutrients, and this should be the same as these three, plus whatever PPMs the tap water started with. Okay, that should get you started, and remember, the numbers don't have to be perfect. Why? Because this isn't rocket science. We're just mixing nutrients. Thanks for watching.